And the product that we're building is called NeuroDriver. It is the AI driver behind level two to level four autonomy. Forget everything you think you know about NVIDIA. Their latest portfolio moves reveal a strategy so brilliant it could lock out competitors from AI and autonomous driving for decades to come. While Wall Street is fixated on chip sales, I've uncovered an intricate web of companies NVIDIA is weaving together that could drive their stock to easily double this current share price in 2025. And almost nobody is connecting these dots. In the next couple of minutes, I'll show you exactly how this master plan unfolds. After working in banking, now managing my own money for over a decade, I've learned that the real money isn't made by following the crowd. It's made by spotting patterns others miss. And speaking of patterns, my golden retriever Winston, who is actually sitting right behind me here, there is a nose. <laughs> Winston helped me spot this particular one during one of her morning walks while well, sort of. He has a fascinating habit of connecting seemingly random paths into the most efficient route to his favorite snack spots, much like NVIDIA is doing with their portfolio right now. And for those of you who suffer from TikTok brain, here is what matters. NVIDIA has just made strategic investments in Nibius Group and WeRide that could revolutionize both AI infrastructure and autonomous driving, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. And you know what this reminds me of? A very similar pattern of the greatest ecosystem any company has ever built, and it's Apple in 2007. And had you spotted that pattern in 2007, well, you'd be insanely wealthy right now because Apple's gone up, I don't know how much, since 2007, quite a lot, well, over 7,000%. And it's spotting these very patterns that helps me be free and allowed me to quit my corporate rat race jobs and I'd like to give you the exact protocol, the exact three-step system that I use every week. It takes me about two hours a week. So you could even do this if you have a full-time job. Maybe you like your full-time job. Maybe you're a little bit unusual, a bit like me. And if you understand the three rules, which is when do you buy, how do you manage the risk, and when do you sell before it collapses? You want to buy before the big moves happen, and we want to sell before the big drop happens. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And I will give you those very rules in a live masterclass. I will teach you for about two hours exactly that. We'll do it during market live trading hours. So we can look at some real trades. We can look at some real examples. You can ask me questions. I'll give you the tools. I'll give you the patterns. I'll give you the whole lot. If you want to join me for that extravaganza, join me on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. That's New York time for those of you who don't live in the Big Apple. And how do you get that? You go to FelixFriends.org slash webinar. The link is down below. And grab yourself one of the 2,000 spots that we make available. It's 2,000 spots. We are always oversubscribed for these, which is why I'm running this one, because I know so many of you couldn't make the last one that we did. So come and join me, FelixFriends.org slash webinar, and learn how we actually make money. Right, so what exactly makes NVIDIA's latest move so groundbreaking? Well, they've just orchestrated what I call a strategic portfolio realignment. Fancy words for saying they're laser focused on dominating two enormous markets. Their latest investment is about a 10% stake in Nibius Group NV and 8% in WeRide. Now, these might seem like small numbers, but they're absolutely crucial pieces to the puzzle. You see, NVIDIA isn't just sort of throwing money around, they're methodically positioning it to monetize the AI and the autonomous driving markets. Both are well worth over a trillion dollars each by 2030, which is in just five short years. Future is now. So let's look at the full portfolio that NVIDIA currently holds. ARM still holds the largest slice. About 45% of their portfolio is ARM. That's down from 65%, by the way. And then we've got Applied Digital sitting at 19%, Recursion Farmer at 17%, What's equally important is that they've gotten rid of complete exits, Nano X, Surf Robotics, and SoundHound, which is why that stock's collapsed. But this isn't spring, spring cleaning or some random cost cutting. It's a very deliberate strategy to, to eliminate anything that doesn't directly support their two main goals, AI infrastructure and autonomous systems. They're taking capital from these non-core ventures and doubling down on what matters the most. And it's exactly what successful traders do. We don't spread ourselves super thin. We double down on the things that are really, really working. 
and we cut positions when they stop performing. So how does this all fit together? Well, Nebias operate massive GPU clusters and they run the cloud infrastructure. They're using ARM-based servers and APLD blockchain nodes, basically all powered by NVIDIA's hardware. ARM provides energy-efficient computing architecture. Their latest design, the V10, are specifically optimized for Nibius's AI workloads through the Grace Hopper superchips. And I know this language sounds bonkers, balmy, right? I think I lost the plot, but it's, you get used to it. APLD manages the data centers running blockchain and large language models, and they're using ARM NVIDIA systems to power their medical AI models. And, and finally, we have WeWrite, which generates real-world data for autonomous vehicles, and they use what? NVIDIA's drive chips. They were co-developed with ARM's Safety Core IP. So you see how everything kind of connects? Each company isn't just doing its own thing. They're creating what I call a, a value multiplier effect. When one company succeeds, it automatically benefits all the others. It's rather brilliant, really. So let's deep dive into these new investments, particularly the one I think is most fascinating, Nebius Group. And you might know them better as Yandex NV, but they've undergone quite the um, transformation, a bit like a exchange. Did you see that the U.S. government was doing gender surgery on animals, and they spent two hundred million dollars on that. Seriously, I mean, to start. But anyway, uh, back to the story. They have rebranded as a Netherlands-based AI infrastructure provider, Yandex. That is, and it wasn't just a name change. They had to sever all Russian ties to comply with sanctions and rebuild themselves from the ground up, essentially. They do three things, GPU clusters, AI-optimized cloud platforms and developer tools, and what are the numbers? Well, revenue is somewhere between 170 to 190 million in this year. Doesn't sound massive, but they have these crazy synergies with NVIDIA. They've built a huge cluster in Kansas City, 35,000 GPUs, and from NVIDIA's point of view, well, it locks in long-term demand for their chips, doesn't it? It sort of creates a moat against competitors. Maybe like AWS and Google were thinking about building their own chips. But here's where it gets clever. Nibius's cloud services are functioning as what I call a developer magnet. Once developers start using these services, they're naturally pulled into NVIDIA's CUDA ecosystem, which basically means you use their kind of programming language, if you will, and you're not going to want to change. You're not going to want to relearn. So it's brilliant for NVIDIA. Basically, the more people build software on NVIDIA chips anywhere in the world through any customer, the more NVIDIA wins because they're going to just get these repeat orders, these upgrade orders. And Nibius is a European company, so it gives NVIDIA a foothold into Europe, which is kind of a, kind of a nice little uh, diversification. Nibius has also announced a $1 billion investment plan by 2025. I should be holding a cat and saying $1 billion. And we should have done that. Uh, to put this into perspective, do you remember another NVIDIA backed company? All Weave? Their valuation trajectory back in 2023, their valuation multiplied 10 times in just 18 months. And Nibios could potentially follow a similar path. I'm not promising you that. I haven't got a crystal ball. I'm just drawing a parallel here. You have to decide on you know, your own risk management. You have to do your own, your own due diligence. It isn't financial. Now, what about the autonomous driving here? Well, I don't want to dive into this one super deep because I'm not a huge fan of WeWrite. But... NVIDIA has also created something here far more powerful. WeRide has a robo-taxi, and they're crushing it with an Uber collaboration, particularly in the Middle East, UAE. NVIDIA also has its own startup, which is called Neuro, and it's handling autonomous deliveries, everything from Domino's pizzas to Walmart's groceries and so on. And both of those, the internal and the external business, are running on NVIDIA's drive or in platform. This isn't about selling chips, it's about basically sharing R&D costs, rolling out software across more use cases, getting more data, learning, making the platform better. So it's pretty smart. The more companies use this platform, the more NVIDIA actually wins. Because it's, of course, all about the data. Rewrite is collecting massive amounts of urban driving data for cities like Abu Dhabi and so on, while Neuro is gathering data from suburban delivery routes, and, and, and it gives NVIDIA potentially a way to compete with test. What's the advantage here for NVIDIA? Well, they could potentially license, I'm sure they will, 
that self-driving platform to say European and Japanese, maybe even Chinese car manufacturers or American car manufacturers who don't want to pay Tesla. So they'll become not just a big supplier to Tesla as they currently are, but they'll also start to compete with Tesla. So maybe you are a Toyota, you don't want to give money to Tesla because they are your, your key competitor and therefore you'd rather pay Nvidia. I don't know if it's as good as Tesla, but as long as it doesn't hit trees, I think it'll be just fine. So you can see that NVIDIA is turning and changing the business model from being a manufacturer, if you will. I know they don't manufacture, they outsource the manufacturing, but essentially they make GPUs, right? A bit like Apple doesn't actually make their own phones. You know, somebody else does that for them, but essentially they make phones. They're moving from that to actually selling software services, recurring revenue license streams for really cool stuff, like full self-driving, and that will be higher margin, recurring revenues, another one-time sale. And it's possible to scale that because at some point, the growth in GPU sales will start to slow, not in the very near future, but at some point, we're going to hit a limit of just how many chips we really need as they get more efficient and they get cheaper. And eventually the competitors, you know, AMD and so on, will start to catch up and then there'll be a bit more competition in that space. So from then to move into software is very, very smart. So if you're looking at, this Nebio stock, ticker symbol is NBIS, by the way, and I'm looking at this here inside, inside Trade Vision. And what does it say to you? Well, the stock has a really nice run up from 2020 all the way up to late 2021. Um, we've got a couple of breakouts here and, and, and over here. And of course, it also shows you that breakouts, even the clever ones we flag inside Trade Vision, uh, are only useful if you have an exit strategy, which is why I'd recommend you come and join me on Thursday morning. And I'll explain particularly that part to you because that's really super, super important. And then it has been a, been a falling knife for a while. And, and that's why I always say don't, don't hodl because uh, you don't want to be doing that. You want to be paper handing your way all the way to wealth. Uh, nothing else matters because uh, this is really only about you and your family. It isn't about, you know, appeasing some, some muppet on, on social media. And um, what do you see? Well, if I draw a little line in here, and again, if you join me on Thursday, I'll explain this a lot more. But we're sort of starting to break out here. Volume was pretty significant on the last trading as I'm re recording this here. And we had this classic kind of consolidation pattern that you always get, which is this sort of zigzag thing here. And we seem to be maybe, maybe, maybe breaking out almost, not quite, I would say. So we're kind of a little early still, but it's getting there. And we have at least taken out the previous high and that high there. So this is kind of improving. Have a look where the 150-day moving average line is. Yeah, that's we've just taken that out. Still sloping down, but we've taken that out. So this is definitely the first genuinely bullish move we've seen, seen from Nebius since November 2021. <laughs> I know, it's a long time. So which is why buy and hold, at least for these kind of stocks, really, really doesn't work. Index fund, brilliant. Uh, you can buy and hold for as long as you like. But on stocks like this, definitely don't do it. So what, what's the, the game plan here? Well, get in here or maybe wait a little, a little more for it to go up some more, make sure the volume gets verified. And then there is a chance it could see $80 again. So that could be an you know, 80% upside or something like that, which is why I think this is definitely one to watch. I'm certainly adding it to my watch list. But the ultimate play here really isn't probably nebulous, but it is ultimately NVIDIA is they're turning themselves from a hardware company with extraordinary margins and massive cash flow into a software company, which will have even more extraordinary margins. And if you see what this stock has been doing, not a lot, right? But up a little here, we're trading at June 2024 levels. So a pretty long time. That's eight months where we've done absolutely bugger all. So I'm liking NVIDIA more and more here. Uh, we've broken through the 50-day moving average line, which is still, I don't know if that's picking up there or not, um, but we're improving on the, we're beating the chip sector again. That's what that indicator down here tells you, MRSI. So it's looking a lot more positive. Of course, earnings are coming up shortly, which is the big risk event with any, any stock like this. But I'm starting to think that they're set up for a very, very bright future because these guys actually are planning far more ahead most people give them credit for the markets just focus on how many chips are they selling. They're not really focused on this massive AI flywheel of software revenue that they're building there. Uh, and, you know, they could, be, they could be powering most other car companies in the world. So you have Tesla and you have everybody else. That's still a heck of a lot of cars out there, right? 
Volkswagen might pay them or Toyota or BMW or Mercedes or, you know, um, any of the other major car companies out there. And, 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 and it makes more sense for them to pay. It's, it's more, more, more appetizing for them to pay a chip company than to pay their number one competitor. I think it's a brilliant play. I'm liking it. I think both stocks are worth looking at. And if you got some value out of this, let me know in the comments down below. Say value and share it with a friend or a golden retriever and make sure you join me on Thursday only if you want 2025 to be your best year yet. And by the way, that knowledge I'm going to give you on Thursday, the skills I'm going to give you on Thursday, you'll keep with you for the rest of your life. No one can ever take that away from you. So come and invest in yourself for about two hours with me on Thursday, felixfriends.org slash webinar. And I look forward to having you then. Take care. When two congressional representatives invest in the same sector within just a couple of days by chief financial analyst, 